Welcome to Medlacto. Today we are going to discuss hyperemia and congestion. First of all, we will see the difference between the hyperemia and congestion. The arrangement of the blood vessels are first of all arteries, then arterioles, then capillaries, then venule, and last is the vein. So here you can see uh, this is the arterioles, then capillaries. Here is this is the capillary and last is the venule. When the arterioles dilate due to any reason, then lot of blood will flow into the capillaries. As we know that the capillaries are usually present in the tissues. If the blood flow in the uh, arterioles enhance then the blood will retain into the capillaries and this condition is called hyperemia. Opposite to that, in that situation, uh, arterioles and the venules remain same. There is no dilation but there is a difference. If due to the any reason the blood output from the venule is blocked or reduced then the blood will retain in the capillaries or you can say tissues because capillaries are present in the tissues so due to the retention of the blood in the capillaries it causes congestion in both situation the blood will retain into the tissues but it is due to dilation of arteries and it is due to the reduce or dockage of the venous return. Actually, this is active situation. This is due to actively. And this is passive situation. And if you see that in hyperemia, oxygenated blood retain into the tissues and due to the oxygenated blood retention, uh, the skin will be reddish or the tissues will be reddish due to the retention of the oxygenated blood. But in that situation congestion, the deoxygenated blood retain into the tissues because the tissues which become deoxygenated uh, cannot pass or cannot go back to the heart. So in that situation uh, the deoxygenated blood will retain in the body and causes cyanosis, blueness and due to the deoxygenated blood. So what will be the causes of the hyperemia and congestion? In hyperemia, it causes, uh, in what situation arteries, arterioles can dilate uh, in uh, inflammation? Yes, you can say it can dilate in the inflammation due to the exercise. In exercise, blood flow rapidly and arterioles dilate. And in exercise, it can also dilate and cause hyperemia and several situations. In congestion, in what situation the venous return uh, cannot uh, improve? So venous return damage due in the cardiac failure. Cardiac failure. The uh, venous return is not proper. So we call congestion cardiac failure on the basis of that. And it can also be due to the thrombosis. If the, uh, let's pause, if uh, there is a thrombus formation of the thrombus in the venule, then the blood will not uh, pass or go back to the heart. So it can be due to the thrombus or due to the Due to any reason, let's suppose if there is a uh, formation of the tumor outside the venule, then it block or compress the 
venule and uh, reduce the flow of the blood uh, through the venule. So tumor can also be the cause of the congestion. So there are several causes of the congestion. And in that situation, if the blood retain in the arteries, then there is a more chances uh, that the uh, fluid will move from the blood vessel into the interstitial space and cause the edema. So congestion can also be related to the edema. So this is the very much, uh, this thing is very much important. Next, we will see the types of the congestion. Congestion in the liver and congestion in the lungs. We will discuss two orders. Acute form, chronic form. In liver, we uh, discuss the same acute and the chronic. In lungs, acute phase. Here you can see that this is a lung. I will draw it with black color. Yeah, and there are several... Uh, actually, several alveoli are present in the lungs. I write it here. This is the alveoli. And as we know, uh, about the alveoli, there are several capillaries around the alveoli. Several capillaries around the alveoli. So, if the congestion means retention of the blood in the tissues means in the capillaries occurs then what will happen uh, congestion occur then uh, actually this is alveolar this is alveolar and this is the alveolar septal edema can occur in that situation because in, in, uh, when the blood retained in the blood vessel, then more uh, chances that the fluid will move into the interstitial space and causes the edema. And there is another reason. If the blood retained in the blood vessel, then there is a lot of chances that the blood vessel ruptured. And in that situation, you can also see hemorrhage. So this is actually in the acute pain. We will see it. And chronic phase, what will happen? Actually, this is the alveoli and this is another alveoli. In that situation, the alveoli septum, septum, septum is thicker and lot of chances uh, that the formation of the fibrosis fibrosis occur in the center of the alveoli in case of chronic and if the hemorrhage occur then in the lungs then uh, let's suppose uh, this is the blood vessel and if the blood vessel rupture then the blood will protrude from the blood vessel and here there are a lot of blood and uh, now our body will remove the debris of the blood and several macrophages several macrophages come and clean this blood so when the macrophages clean the blood and in blood there are several hemosiderin in which the iron is stored and when the uh, macrophages clean uh, these blood clot or hemorrhage blood then lot of chances that here this is the macrophages and in them hemosiderin hemosiderin will enter and now this macrophages is called hemocytorin laden macrophages the macrophages which are filled with the hemocytorin are called 
hemocytin laden macrophages so in liver situation acute and chronic i write it here you can see that this is the liver and if i cut liver then a portion show here in the center in the center of the liver then the congestion is most likely because in the center let's suppose uh, here you can see this is the central vein of the liver and congestion occur in that situation and when the congestion occur then hypoxia will occur in the center means oxygen is not properly supplied at the central region if the hypoxia hypoxia occur at the center it causes necrosis of the tissues lot of chances that the, if the hypoxia occur and the uh, necrosis will occur at the center of the tissues but at the periphery here you can see at the periphery of the tissues then uh, these tissues are uncongested congestion and they are oxygenated oxygenated because these the periphery area get oxygen from the hepatic arterioles so they are oxygenated and at the center they are uh, hypoxic or deoxygenated and in that situation we see this as central area is reddish and the periphery is actually yellowish yellowish is basically due to the conversion of the fatty tissues so central area is reddish and the periphery will be the yellow so on the basis of this we call it a nerd mark cell nerd mark cells uh, because it look like a nerd mark so this is in case of the liver and uh, there is lot of chances due to the congestion hemorrhage will occur and in case of hemorrhage if the hemorrhage occur then same like this hemorrhage occur and lot of macrophages come and engulf the or clean the uh, debris of the red blood cell and these cells are called the uh, hemosiderin laden macrophages and now these cells are called cardiac failure cell so hemosiderin laden macrophages are also called cardiac failure cell and keep remember that uh, liver first of all liver convert into fatty and after the fatty is formation of the fibrosis and after cirrhosis of the liver occur actually cirrhosis is a severe form of the fibrosis so liver first of all convert into the fatty and then fibrosis and last is the cirrhosis and if the cirrhosis occur in that situation we call it cardiac cirrhosis so this is all about the hyperemia and congestion if you have any question then you may ask in the comment section